hey guys so today we are going to look at another activity just like we did yesterday and for today's activity we will be following the same order I will be showing you an activity and you are going to follow with it and you are going to take notes where necessary ok so uh, like yesterday I want you to make sure you follow the experiment format aim, apparatus, procedure observation and your result because this is like I am saying it's a repeated definite question in the exam so it's good that if you know the format already alright now yesterday we looked at how an acid is going to react with a metal today we'll do a metal reaction not with an acid but with a base okay so for this I have told you what my aim for the day is that is uh, to observe the reaction between a base and a metal okay now if I have to come to the equipment uh, or the apparatus either way works uh, first mainly my reactants okay what is going to be uh, what I am going to start with so as usual I will start with my metal and my base right the main two reactants I have a metal and a base today I will be using zinc metal powder like we did yesterday and I will also be using uh, another base and that is hydro uh, sodium hydroxide ok uh, this is the base that we used for the indicator test again it's very strong need to be very careful when we do this uh, experiment alright so I'll be taking certain precautions also apart from this I'll need a, a container like a beaker uh, or a round bottom flask in this case I'll take a round bottom flask I can also take test tube uh, like yesterday I did with a test tube but it's not necessary uh, whichever fits just for variety sake I used a round bottom flask ok so today we will use a round bottom flask uh, again I will need a Bunsen burner or a spirit lamp I will be using spirit lamp today uh, spirit lamps are nothing but it is just like a small lamp in which you can light a flame and heat if necessary ok since I will need that today I use that and along with this a matchbox beaker is for support if I need it I might use it alright so this is major apparatus my reactants my container and anything else that I need the spirit lamp ok alright so uh, I'll just start with the procedure directly the first thing I need to do is I need to add my reactants together right so first I'll take the zinc I've already poured it out on this paper over here uh, just to save time ok and I'll be pouring this inside of the container ok now I need to be careful because there are pieces of rocks in it and this is glass after all possibility for it to crack ok so uh, here is metal inside of this conical uh, or round bottom flask or whatever flask it is ok right now the next thing I need to do is add my second reactant to this container and that is my base so since the base is strong and I need to be extra careful uh, I am going to add it to the beaker first and then add it to this the advantage of that is beakers have this kind of like a notch over here that helps me pour a liquid easily uh, which a bottle does not have which is why I will be first pouring it in that now okay. like I said first I will pour my base in this beaker there you go beaker thank you alright that's here's a bit too much but that is fine alright now I'll make sure I close this tightly right now I'll add these two reactants together So I'll just give it a light swirl, make sure they are mixed. Okay. Off the top, you won't see any much of a visible reaction here, which is fine because this reaction doesn't happen normally. 
if you remember in the chapter chemical equations we read about something called endothermic reactions right? these are reactions that need heat for them to occur now this reaction is one example of an endothermic reaction wherein I am going to need to use a slight amount of heat for the reaction to occur which is why I need this spirit lamp with me so today I will be I will be heating this uh, spirit lamp a bit, uh, I mean heating this flask with the spirit lamp, okay. Shouldn't overdo it cause flask is, you know, after all it is glass. This is borosilicate glass by the way you cannot just use any normal glass. So please don't try to do it on your own uh, at home by using any regular glass. Borosil glass is heat resistant it can handle heat it won't crack so easily so this is why I will be uh, using this and even then I am going to need caution because it's quite hot I can feel the heat on my fingers I will just swirl it a bit a slight amount of heat is needed to jump start this reaction which what is what makes it endothermic uh, and we will try to see what happens once the reaction starts. I think the reaction is kind of occurring. So I will try to test it now. I am going to close this mouth for a while, make sure the gas is collecting within and try to stay away from the flame. Let me light a match. Okay, so we are going to perform the same test. Let's see if it happens. It did go off, not with a pop, but yeah, it did go off. It just needs to collect for a bit longer, as far as I know. Hmm. In hindsight, it's best to use the test tube itself because smaller mouth and you know, it heats quickly. This thing is big, it takes a while to heat. Right. Hmm. All right. Let's just let the reaction happen, let the gas collect. Okay, this is hot. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, let's try it out again. It's getting really difficult for me to collect the gas here. So essentially what should happen here is um, sodium hydroxide and zinc will interact and form again the same type of products okay salt and water however it will be a different salt not the same salt that we got in the acid yesterday we call this a sodium zincate okay so this sodium zincate salt along with hydrogen gas will be produced in this reaction.
and again the hydrogen gas should be bubbling and once it does bubble you'll be able to see with the pop sound test right however it's somehow not happening here um, so we will uh, just stop the reaction here for today uh, I do hope you understood however I'm not able to figure out why the reaction is not occurring but yes uh, so that's the thing uh, that's all for today your observation would be that you know a gas is produced and flame test tells that it is hydrogen gas all right so that's it for today uh, i'll see you tomorrow in the next class thank you